Hello, my name is Matt Duncan. I'm a student at the Yill Hall at SMU, Cohort 16. Today we're going to talk about light mass. This is our third in a series of three uh, sections on light. We're using UDK version 8364. Now I have a demonstration here of a world without light mass turned on with a bunch of different lights. We're just going to go ahead and show you. Uh, you can see there's some really dark shadows. Um, normally you'd use a skylight to fill those in and really things don't look very good at all. Uh, light mass kind of takes care of the fill lights and does some other really cool things. I'm going to show you a world, the same world, that has light mass turned on just to give you an example here. And this is light mass with all of the default settings. So this is again the same world with just the defaults on light mass and look at this already. You know we don't have all those dark spots and the back of this wall is getting lit. It's pretty cool stuff. The way it works is all of the point lights that correspond to these lanterns are spheres, and they're, they're spheres that emit light. And the dominant directional light that's providing our sunlight works like a disk emitting photons. Those photons bounce, in this case, three times off of the various surfaces, picking up some of the color and losing a little strength and causing automatic fill. Pretty cool stuff. I'm going to show you some of the properties here. Under view in your world, you have world properties. This is where all the light mass properties are. Now use global illumination. If that's not checked, you won't be using light mass. So keep that checked, <laughs> definitely. Um, diffuse boost, this is where a lot of the power comes in. Um, the lower this is, the darker your shadows are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to a 2. And um, another important one, this in indirect normal influence boost. What this means is your surface uh, material normals are, are giving about 30% uh, of boost to your uh, light mass or the light uh, indirect lighting from light mass. I'm going to bump that up to the maximum of 0.8, which could cause some graphical artifacts, so be careful with that. Um, but increasing it, I found, does make things look a lot nicer. Um, most of the other settings here do uh, increase or enhance light mass in various ways. I'm only going to go over these two because these are the two most potent and um, you can feel free to experiment with these as you will. I have a pre-rendered environment for both of these set up. Let's go ahead and open that up and uh, we'll show you here. Uh, so we have darker shadows which is nice and um, areas where it was really washed out like this corner because there's a lot of lights uh, the surface normals are picking up and bouncing a little bit more accurately so that's nice as well um, we're gonna go into some settings specific to lights now uh, in particular we're gonna do this for our dominant directional light here I'm gonna go ahead and hit F4 to bring up its properties and you can see that there's only a few light mass settings for lights and this is true for all lights most important one is the indirect lighting scale. Uh, the larger that it, this is, the more that light's going to influence the uh, bounced light. Uh, four is a pretty good number, but those shadows are a little too dark, so I'm going to bump that up to eight, double. Now this lighting saturation, uh, it will the light will retain the color if it's at a one or a 100% of the entire light the entire way through. But if you want the, the color to fall off over time, you can set it lower. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to a 0.5. We're going to take a look at this. And again, I have a environment set up for this already. I'm going to go ahead and jump in there. And uh, take a look-see. So um, you can't tell as much behind the statue here, but if we go out on this balcony, the shadows that were being cast primarily from that dominant light are all. Uh, more muted, although they are still fairly crisp. And the shadows, which this is all um, indirect light here, are more muted in color than the direct light. That's pretty cool. Uh, one of the cool things that light mass lets you do is cast light rays. Light rays can be cast off of three different types of lights. They can be cast off of dominant directional lights, such as we have right here. They can be cast off of uh, any sort of dynamic spot or point lights as well. I'm going to show you with the dominant directional. 
Now what this will do is kind of use the emissive channel of the skybox as a filter to show where the light rays need to be. So light shafts are just under your basic lighting here, and if I check it, you immediately see we've got some cool things going on here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out over here so you can kind of see it coming through the pillar here. You see there's some nice light shafts. We're going to actually go back here behind a tree. And these light shafts would actually look a little bit better in game, but they look pretty good in the render window anyway. Now I still have my dominant light selected, so let's play with this a little bit. For the bloom scale, if I turn that up, it's going to pretty, pretty greatly increase the, the strength or power of those uh, light shafts. For the radial blur, if I turn that down, say to 50%, it, it cuts off the size. You'll notice if I put it down to zero, there's practically none. Well, the lowest it goes is 15. All right. You can set that at 75. Um, the other thing we can change is the bloom tint here. So I'm going to pick a tint, and, and you can see as I use my color picker here to hover over the world, the color of those shafts is changing dynamically. So real time here. We could pick an odd green if we really wanted to, but usually it's a good idea to pick a color off of your, your background. So I think that adding a little bit of orange seems, that looks, that looks pretty good, so we're going to go with that. And I'll show you what I mean by it looks better in games. So we're looking through this tree. If I hit play, I hop on my little hoverboard here and head out to this section. You'll see that the light rays are a little more broken up by the tree. The tree is moving, so the light rays are moving a little bit. It looks pretty cool. Uh, another thing the light mask can do is uh, allow you to cast light off of a uh, texture, or off of a material, off of the emissive channel of material specifically. So like this uh, lamp here has an emissive uh, channel on the texture. And if we delete this light, in fact, if we were to delete all of these, these lights, you could go into this and hit F4 to go to your properties. And under light mask for a static or for a uh, material, you'll see this use emissive for static lighting. And if you check that, what you're going to get is something similar to what I'm going to show you. And that's uh, right here. Uh, let's see. We're going to go ahead and hit play. And uh, this is a world with no tweaking, using only the textures uh, for lighting sources. Doesn't look that great right now, but that means just means that you need to change some of those settings. I'm going to show you those right now. You go back in, and uh, one of the problems is these lights are very small. Uh, the surface of the light's only the size of the lantern. So uh, we're going to boost the emissive value. We're going to make it times four. And I have another environment set up to show you that specifically. I'm going to go in here. And uh, yeah, that looks, that looks a lot better. Uh, we boosted the, the emissive rate, and that's causing a lot more fall-off, which is lighting our room very nicely. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Lots of cool things you can do with light mass. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, again, my name is Matt Duncan from Cohort six, uh, 16 at the Guildhall at SMU. Thank you.